there are times when ingrained sadness or fear make it hard to believe in the good things God gives us and will give us. We see the silver lining and prepare for the next thundercloud. But this morning the clouds part and just look at the holy city coming down from heaven. It's beauty, the twelve-fold symmetry of God's right ordering. And it's for us. Not everything that glitters is gold. This is far, far better. The radiance of God's own glory, illuminating an eternal home for us, the new Jerusalem. Its high walls offer the security we crave. Its apostolic foundations root this city in the truth and grace of the gospel, directing us to the mansions prepared for us by the crucified and risen Lord. Now, over the last few days, I've been looking at some of the silver and gilt chalices and ciboria that were given to this house in its earliest years. Some are inset with precious or semi-precious stones. Some are also inscribed in thanksgiving for favors received or in memory of the donors and their loved ones. The ciborium from which the concelebrants will take communion this morning is inscribed, given to Blackfriars by Violet Clifton in memory of Father B. Jarrett, O.P. And these gifts also, in their beauty, point like the holy city in the book of Revelation to the utter goodness of God and his generosity towards us. Generosity and built this house, the benefactors who made that possible. But far above all, pointing to the infinite worth of the blessed sacrament, the real presence of Christ who comes to us in this holy communion. The visible beauty of the sacred vessels points towards the invisible beauty of the sacrament itself. They draw us in towards the mystery. And as disciples, that appears to be our role as well. In our gospel this morning, Philip draws in Nathaniel, Nathaniel whom tradition has identified with St. Bartholomew, draws him into the mystery of discipleship with the invitation to come and see the Lord. Now, we may see each other more like earthenware vessels than silverware. We may be a bit chipped or cracked, but in our mutual charity, our attempts at fraternity, we too are meant to shine and draw others into the mystery of God's overwhelming love for us. In 1932, Father B. Jarrett wrote to thank Father Bruno Walkley for work he had successfully undertaken in the parish at Woodchester. He praised Father Bruno for his unquenchable flame of hopefulness. That unquenchable flame of hopefulness was a torch that Bede himself bore for many in the province. It should be the mark of every Dominican friar and indeed of Christian disciples generally. And from that flame may others catch a glimpse of the immense love God has for us all.